I need to ask a question. Yeah, go on, mate. How do you have three spider man Aren't you just supposed to pretend like you're Spider-Man and there was no other spider man in the movie? Oh, I, I don't this is gold. This is great. This is go- We're diving in deep. Tom, let's explain no, the Spider-Verse. Is- I have no <laughs> idea what's going on or why. I'm I have just finished two and a half months press tour explaining the concept of the multiverse. I am not going to explain it All right, Josh, to Mark Wahlberg. Josh. It's, it's, it is a long story. It's complicated. The idea is that myself, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield have been coexisting as Spider-Man. Oh. And in this film, we put down those barriers and allowed the universe to expand, meaning that we could coexist in the same universe so that they could help me save the day against the villains that they had fought. So do they Alfred then, Molina do they and then Willem try to like sabotage you because you're the better of the three Spider-Mans? <laughs> Is that no. what happens? No, they, they love each other. Plan? The other no, Spider-Man is jealous of like the new and improved Spider-Man. Each other so get you. It's bromance. Oh, this that's it's all about love. <laughs>congratulations on the movie guys this is a big ginormous action adventure and with that comes a lot of stunts a lot of action tell me who got the most bruises on this one who who has the most uh, scars mr holland tommy you know we really leaned into the idea that you know sully was this kind of older chap who was looking for an excuse to not have to do as much of the heavy lifting and you know nate being this kind of wide-eyed kid and eager to put a shift in meant that i was the one you know swinging from boats and falling out of planes and drowning in swimming pools and all sorts of different stuff. So I walked away from this job with a few bangs and bruises here and there, but thankfully I walked away pretty unscathed. Josh, do you think that happened by accident? <laughs> Did you add some stage directions for, for Tom and say nothing for uh, me? You're, you're, you retired? No, but I, I, I did notice the unique opportunity to just sit in the helicopter barking orders or complain about a sore hip or something and go get him, kid. <laughs> Is there something strange, Mark, when finally in a film, the other guy has more shirtless scenes than you? This must be like a bizarre phenomenon for you. Actually, you know what? No, it was it was a blessing. I was uh, more than happy to embrace that. I think, you know, I've, I've done my fair share of action and, and physicality. And, and Tom really is, he's in his prime, you know? So it's, uh, this is the beginning of, of the next 15, 20 years of him getting after it and, and, uh, and you know, setting the stage for the next guy. Having both done a, a fair amount of action to say the least, what's the stage direction you dread seeing in a script? What's the action sequence that's like, oh God, I know what this means and this is gonna wreak havoc on my body. For me, harnesses, harnesses, water, yeah. Uh, you know, cold, uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, I... Uh, anything in this movie. And now it's anything with singing or dancing. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the next phase of Mark's career is gonna be a lot of sitting in chairs, it sounds like. You're just ready to just uh, relax. I'm already working on my old voice. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tom? Is there anything that, that makes you kind of uh, sweat a little bit when you see it in a script? It's just got to be harnesses. There's no escaping. There's no amount of prep you can do to make a harness comfortable. The thing I dread most in Spider-Man is anything that's upside down. You know, when you have to do a scene that's four pages long and your character is upside down for the whole thing. And with those films, you know, it can take two, three days to shoot a scene. So anything upside down is, is really hard work. A lot of the humor in this film is at the expense of both of your ages. I mean, for you, Tom, I feel like everybody is is treating you like you're 16 years old perpetually. You are gifted and cursed with this. What is the best and worst aspect about people always assuming that you're younger than you are? I think the, the advantage of people thinking that you're younger than you are is that they, they underestimate you, you know, especially in the, you know, a line of business and that sort of thing when you're negotiating deals. You know, people do treat you like a kid. And when you come back as an adult, it kind of, changes their track. Um, but it's nice being able to play a kid. I, I enjoy bringing a youthful energy to these characters and it's something that I, you know, I, I do well. Um, so I'll keep doing it for as long as I am prepubescent, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, for you, I mean, I guess so Tom is 25. You were well into your film career by the time you were his age. Compare and contrast for me. Where were you at maturity-wise, career-wise, versus where Tom is now? Any words of advice for your co-star uh, here? Well, I could definitely now, looking back, give him lots of advice, but he's really he's really managing it well because with 
huge success early on, especially in big tentpole movies, you know, this kind of IP, uh, Spider-Man and Uncharted. It's tough to balance, but he's really been go he's gone out of his way. And you can tell those are very calculated choices about how to balance them with acting pieces and showing people what he's capable of doing, continue to grow as an actor and mature as an actor while navigating these waters. For me, it would have been a disaster. I mean, we talked about this before, you know, some roles that I thought kind of would have been the game changer for me, having not had those and had to kind of just go movie by movie, filmmaker by filmmaker and growing until I could really handle the success and the responsibility of carrying a film with your name being above the title, especially when it's not IP, it's an original story. People don't know what it is and have to go out there and sell it and have the expectations of it being a success and being a profitable for, for the studio, or whoever's making the movie. But he's, he's doing a really good job and you know, it's smart. He's utilizing all of those things that you get from being successful in big tentpole movies to you know allow him to go and do things that are really creative and gonna challenge him and show people what he can do as an actor. Um, well, let's look at the varied resume of your co-star here. What's the role on Mark's resume you would have liked to have a, a crack at? Is, there, is it Dirk Diggler? What, 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 what jumps out? Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. I love Boogie Nights. I think Boogie Nights is, is a masterful piece of work. And I would love to have had the opportunity to bring that character to life. It looked like a lot of fun to make. I mean, how old were you when you made that film? I was your age. I was 25. 25, wow. You know would be great too? Um, like yeah. Fear, playing Tom playing a bad guy who's, yeah. you know, he's kind of sweet. You know, baby-faced, handsome guy and to be able to flip that switch, which I know he's capable of doing. That could be fun too to see. He's got a yeah, little Bob Nero Cape Fear thing going on now with the hair. Yeah, right. there you go. <laughs> Would you ever direct, Mark? Would you ever be interested in directing? Yeah, it's something that I've wanted to do, but it's just, it's a big time commitment. So I think uh, probably sooner rather than later. Directing the Fear nice. reboot with Tom Holland. Why not? Ooh, that actually could be good. <laughs> you're really good this is a unique uh a production in that you know to pull the curtain back a little bit this has been in development for a lot of years people have tried to crack this film adaptation for a long while mark was going to play tom's role back in the day so that's a very unique circumstance you kind of like hand off the role but you stay in the film in a different role mark was it odd to sort of see someone else playing a role that you'd probably spent a fair amount of time thinking about how you would have approached it it wasn't. I mean, I was I was caught off guard at first because they just called me up and they were like, hey, guess what? We got Uncharted going again. I'm like, oh, cool. I said, who's going to be the guy? And I think it's, we're going to get Jack for one last go. We're going to get, who are we going to get? And then all of a sudden they were like, Tom Holland. I was like, for what? Like, he's going to play, he's going to play Nathan Drake. And I was like, oh, what, what am I going to play? They're like, Sully. I was like, okay. And then of course I thought, yeah, actually that could be a lot of fun. So yeah, I was, a, I was a little surprised at first, but certainly embraced the idea right away. And I think the way into it is so much better because you're really gonna satisfy all the diehard gamers, you know, the 40 some odd million people that bought this game, but you're also going to be able to introduce it in the way where Tom gets to become Nathan and step into his own and really right. become the guy. So that's cool. A any new street cred with your kids by being friends with Spider-Man, Mark? Is that a factor in this one? Street cred? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, you know what? My, my sons were, were very impressed because they saw Uncharted before they saw Spider-Man. And I don't think they, I don't know, really old enough to appreciate what being Spider-Man means until they saw. And the first time they went back to the theater was to see Spider-Man. They hadn't been in the movie theater for like two years. And that was our thing. Every weekend we go at least, we go at least twice a week to the theater. So now we're starting to get back, which is really nice. Tom and, uh, you know, the folks at Sony really single-handedly reopened the theaters and, and, and saved uh, the cinematic experience, which is great. So this is the first time, Tom, I'm speaking to you since No Way Home has made a gajillion dollars. Congratulations, Hi. buddy. Uh, not only just the box Thank office, you. but just bringing so much joy to so many of us. I spoke to Andrew recently, Andrew Garfield, about uh, the whole production, and he gave me a real interesting perspective. On, I just want to pick your brain on one scene, the, the scene where he saves sure. Zendaya. Uh, which is just like yeah. maybe the most heartfelt scene for the audience watching it. Were you on set for that scene? What was your perspective on that scene? Did you know it was going to be such a, an emotional linchpin of the film? I just knew how important it was to Andrew. You know, I think something that I had never really taken into account 
uh, which was probably because of my, you know, my naivety and how young I was, was his departure from the character can't have been a, you know, a sweet goodbye. And I think for him to have the opportunity to kind of wrap up his storyline in a way that is fulfilling uh, to not only him as an actor, but, but Peter Parker as a character, it was really apparent that it meant a lot to him. And, you know, I look back on that whole experience and I really should have called him up when I got cast to just sort of, I guess, break bread or, or just talk about it because I, I didn't. Um, so for me, it was really nice to be a part of that and to see him kind of make amends with his character and with the studio. It, you know, it was, it was a huge moment for him and a huge moment for all of us watching, especially the people in the theatre. Uh, so it was a lovely moment and, you know, one that I saw coming as soon as I realised that they were going to bring them back. I kind of could figure out that something like that was going to happen. Uh, but his performance is, is is wonderful in that moment. And, you know, it's arguably the most emotional moment in the MCU. And I'm delighted that Andrew got that time to, to kind of make his amends with the character. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but Tom has been manifesting all of his career moves, his life moves. It's all happened because he's put it out into the universe. Do we believe in manifestation, Mark? Like, what do you want to manifest into your future, Tom? What's left to manifest for yourself? What are we putting out into the I'm universe? I'm only going to give you one hint. It's the only prop I've ever saved, that prosthetic from Boogie Nights. It's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> That's more of a threat than a hint. Watch, That's not a hint. Watch. That's a threat. When yeah. worlds collide. <laughs> Tom, Tom, what do you want to manifest? I want to manifest taking a break is what I would like to do. I would like to manifest taking a bit of a break and just playing golf every day, enjoying some time with my friends and family, moving into my house, and just enjoying uh, some time off is what I'd like to manifest. You deserve it.